Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Alrighty. Sorry, I've been trying to run around and get some things done before starting the stream, but let's jump right on in. Okay. So, quick review. Hey, what's up, man? Long time don't talk to. So, let's uh, do a quick review of what we've got in here so far. We've got a uh, cheesy little simple background in main menu. We haven't had a whole lot of functionality to it just yet, but uh, we've got the play game and exit. Go to play game, and for now, we can actually just jump right between any of the four levels we want to go to. But we'll just go ahead and jump in and go to level one, let it do its thing. And what we've done is create some simple health kit pickups and a pain pad that actually causes some pain. And the health kits with an anti-ninja feature so that um, you can't sit there and steal the health kits unless you actually need them. Plus they respawn. Also, um, I don't know if you can notice, but in our little cheesy, simple um, heads-up display we have our hunger and thirst actually working and ticking down, but we don't actually have a health pickup or a thirst pickup just yet. So we can actually do that really, really quickly. It's going to be the same thing as setting up the... Um, yeah, it's like a miniature mine. That way you can um, step on it and cause a little bit of pain and test out your, your health feature. Um, one of the things I need to, to get onto later is actually finishing and doing the save game feature. You know, our little cheesy portal system to carry us to the next level or return us back. And... There is no transition levels, and the levels are nothing in them right now, so they're going to load quickly. Once we've got our save game done, if your health is down, and your hunger is down, and your thirst is down, it'll save all that information, so that when you transition to the next map, that carries over as well. So, let's quickly just jump in here to our assets folder, and go to our blueprints, and we can see we have our teleporters here. Let's go ahead and do a quick bit of cleanup, and do a folder here for teleports and I'm going to grab all four of those and throw them into that folder and we'll do another folder called pickups me and my folders I gotta keep everything somewhat organized I'm gonna leave this one here the pain pad in that folder I'm not really worried about it we're just using it for a short-term deal so now in our pickups folder let's go ahead and create a new blueprint class and actor we're going to call this our can drink and let's go ahead and create another one which is the same blueprint class actor and can food and we're going to make them absolutely purely dumb and basic we're going to add a component which is going to be a cylinder and we're going to scale it down just a wee bit 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 still a little bit on the big side we'll know for sure when we actually look at it in the map so it's actually I'm going to drag this off screen for just a second and throw it into the map so that I can actually look at it now if you're only working with one monitor I hate it for you um, you can actually get by with it so if you make your changes here, your your sizing and everything else, it's actually visible in, in your screen there. It's just easier for me to put it in a different monitor to, to work with. So we're going to try 0 0.2 by 0 0.2 by 0 0.2, and we're going to go ahead and we want to raise it up anyway. Let's do our Z to 0.3, make it a little bit taller. And what we can do here is go ahead and raise that up, compile and save. I actually want to go ahead and so we, we see it in the map here, but let's go ahead and raise it up just a hair more to about mm, go with 80. Compile, save. I'm actually going to close the can of food and I'm going to delete the canned drink because right now it it's going to look like the same thing and let's actually delete that off of here 
because we don't want to put it in our main menu map, we want to actually go to our maps folder and level one. And we're not going to save because we didn't do anything permanent save wise. So let's go ahead and go back to our assets and our blueprints and pickups. And let's drop a can of food in here and let's take a look at it. You know what? A little big, but don't care. It's lovely. Absolutely lovely. And if we want, we can actually go into our details panel and um, we want to find our canned food. Actually, in our blueprint, never mind. And when we select our cylinder, we can change the uh, material to the chrome. Compile and save. And let's take a look at it now. Now we have a nice little metal can. Isn't that cheesy? All right, lovely. So before we get carried away, let's go ahead and create a duplicate. And we're going to go ahead and call this our can drink. We're going to go into it and look at our cylinder. And let's go ahead and change the... Um, um, screw it. We're going to make it gold, just so we have a little bit of difference to look at. So we can go ahead and jump right in here. Yeah, I get a few. I get a, a few of the, the dedicated. Um, I try to do Tuesdays and Thursdays on this series, and Wednesdays I do a state of the game on the game that I'm actually producing, and then on Sundays I do just a, a tips and, and hints kind of a, a broadcast. i um, been doing the live streams more just because of, you know, it's easier to, to handle, and I can kind of keep tabs on multiple things going on at one time. So, with our cylinder, we need to look at something we didn't add before we actually created this. And we need to add in a... We'll just do a box collision. Alright, man. Good to see you again. So, with our box collision, let's go ahead and make it 2x2x2 two by two by two so we can see it. Well, let's go ahead and make it even bigger. Let's go ahead and go with... Um, Five by five by five. We'll actually make it ten on our height, so we can just walk through it. Um, that'll be good enough for having that. Let's compile and save, and remember five five ten. We go into our event graph and right-click on our box collision, add event on component begin overlap. And if you don't remember how we did the um, the first aid pickup, we'll kind of make it work along the way here but if we need to we can actually go back and review but let's go ahead and cast to uh, um, I always change to player underscore base and I didn't in this case and let's move you over here and in our character folder our blueprints yeah third person character I never did change it over for this project but as soon as we overlap it, we need to, first off, get and we're our, our drink. So we want to get our thirst. We want to set thirst. So we'll, we're going to need both of those. And what we need to do here is do... Um, float. We're going to need another one. Yeah, that is easier to do, and that's something that uh, I'll show back later in, into a refinement of doing the uh, child actor and then setting the individual stats inside there. But, um, yeah, trying to keep it basic, keep it simple for people to grasp the, the basics of what's going on. So we need to make sure that our character actually needs a drink before we can let him take it. So um, we need to look to see if our thirst is less than 100 and if it is well then we gotta have our branch and we can link these two together here and I'm just gonna start neatening up a little bit as we go so here's where we need to have another 
get thirst. So we could technically use it off of the other one, but you know, we're just going to go ahead and put a new one down just for the sake of it. So with, with our thirst, we're going to float plus float, and we are going to click in the correct place instead of the wrong place. If our thirst is less than 100 true, then we are going to set our thirst to thirst plus, let's go ahead and make a 25 thirst. It's a big drink. So, with that, let's go ahead and, and I do not remember if we set up the, the cap on the drinks. So let's look at our third person character and we want to look at our dehydration. So let's look at our dehydration system. Nope. It's not set up in there. So we can go ahead and put that into here so that we don't exceed um, 100. So we can go ahead and we can use this one right here because it's the new value of our thirst. So if our thirst is um, greater than 100, then we want to grab another set mode. Set thirst. And let's drag you over here because we need a branch node. We'll throw it onto there. And if it is greater than 100, then we're going to set our thirst to 100. So that should work for our can of soda. And that's going to allow us to go ahead and get our drink. However, we need to remember what we did with the first aid kit. Yeah, I just want people to, to, to get into the habit of knowing where their, their, yeah, their, their, <laughs> their top and bottom is. To kind of be more considerate towards knowing ahead of time where their, their cap is. So if you're setting your cap at 100, try not to get too lazy with putting in extra things like, um, you know, um, clamps to to not let it exceed a certain limit, but to put a manual thing in to show what's going on. So, here's the thing is, when we overlap with it, it's going to ask if our thirst is less than 100. If it is, it's going to give us 25 thirst, but we need to go ahead and make it disappear. So let's go ahead and grab our cylinder reference. And let's um, try to quit pulling our headset off of our head. And let's go ahead and set visibility. And again, this always works, except for whenever UE4 hates me. So we're going to set the visibility to unchecked. We're going to have a delay. And we're just going to put a short delay in here of five seconds, just so we can watch it happen. And then we're going to... Now see, I've also had problems where if I do that, I can you know, copy and paste. It doesn't want to work sometimes. So set visibility. And I've dragged that off of the reference right here. And let's go ahead and set our visibility to true. So that should give us a five second cooldown. But here's where the problem is. We need to make sure that we're doing it at the right time. So let's go ahead and review one more time. If we can, then it lets us get it and then it makes it disappear and then come back. So in theory, it should work, but let's go ahead and check it to make sure. And unfortunately right now, we can test to see that it does have collision on there. So we want to turn collision off. So that's the first thing we have to deal with. So we'll look at our cylinder and we're going to come down here to our collision preset and no collision. Compile and save. So now we can walk. 
Excuse me? Why can I not walk through you? I just turned off your collision, you ass. Let's make sure we're putting down the right one. We are working on the canned drink, which is gold, not silver. But we can go ahead and, since we know that we're going to be doing the same thing, let's go ahead and get our cylinder and turn off our collision. No collision. So now, if we have both of them in the scene, we can walk through them and not pick them up unless they actually need to be picked up. So we can sit here and goof around and wait, or we can speed up the amount of um, rate at which our hunger and thirst. But I see that my thirst is going down. I can see it on the bar. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Um, but it's the the blue bar in the in the middle. It's the thirst. So I'm going to walk over the golden can, and it ups my thirst level, and it disappears. And let's wait. And there we go. It respawns. So there we go. And it's going to check for a less than 100, and you're almost always going to be less than 100. So let's go ahead and we know this works. Looks lovely. So we need to do the same thing now, and we need to make that work for our canned food. So let's open our canned food. We don't need any of you stuff. We need to go ahead and add a collision, box collision, and we're going to need to go ahead and add event on component begin overlap, and we're going to make this quick. Cast to third person character. And then let's go ahead and get hunger. Let's get two of them. And let's go ahead and get two set hunger. Because I think we needed two of them, didn't we? Something like that. All right, so the first thing we're doing is we need to go ahead and set up a branch node. And we're going to need another branch later, so we'll just throw another one in. We need to check to see if our thirst is less than, or hunger, excuse me, hunger is less than 100. And if so, then we're going to be able to go ahead and pick up the can. All right, so there we need set. Yes, we can. So now we need to go ahead and set our hunger to hunger, which is a float plus float. And we're going to do the same thing. We'll do 25. And then we're going to set our hunger to hunger plus 25. And that's good. Now we need to again check here is it um, float I'm dyslexic so I always have to, to pull it down so I can see and make sure that I'm getting the right one if it's greater than 100 then we need to set it to 100 so let's go ahead and grab our branch hook that in So I have to play to my dyslexia a little bit right there too. So anytime I'm doing a float or if I need the greater than or less than symbols, I'm going to do that. So if it bugs you, sorry, but uh, my dyslexia, I got to do it. So we're on hunger, 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 hunger. Everything looks good. We need to go ahead and, and grab a reference to our cylinder. And we need to set visibility twice. So the first one is going to link here, drop you there, and then we're going to run a delay. And again, we'll run five seconds, and then we're going to set our new visibility to true, and that should be good to go. We just need to look at our viewport really quickly, 
and change our box collision to um, yikes um, two and bring it up because we did a little bit different than we did the last one so let's compile and save and take a look at it so just need to quickly <coughs> excuse me <coughs> let our thirst go down just a wee bit and our hunger go down a little bit this is why I usually keep it at a pretty fast rate for your your hunger and your thirst to go down so you can test variables and, and test your pickups to make sure that they work so I'm gonna grab my food and, and a drink first and then my food and that works and do they respawn yep they sure do so that works alright so what we should do later on is kinda give it a little bit of an overdrive effect on the hunger and thirst because it's constantly draining the whole time and if you just drank and you just ate then you should probably have um, um, a way to and we'll work on this later a way of slowing down the rate or any cheap easy way to do that is to go ahead and and set up a um, you take out your cap temporarily or whatever you will we'll figure out a way of doing that later but there's there's multiple different ways you can go about doing it so we know that our, our thirst and our hunger and our pickups work they're just really crappy look to look at because we don't have any assets in here yet so let's move upon to the next point when we're looking at our map and this is level one there's nothing here it's just our test stuff so we need to go ahead and and I'm gonna go ahead grab all the med kits the pain pad um, is there anything else we need to get rid of now let's go ahead and get rid of all the the pickups the pain pad and let's just bring it back down to a simple clean map so when considering your map there's a lot of things to take into consideration Primarily, what is your game going to be? What kind of game modes are you going to have? Are you going to have combat? Is it going to be a puzzle game? The way you lay out your map is based off of what type of actions are being happened. If you're doing combat, is it free-for-all? Is it player versus environment? Is it player versus player? Is it team versus team? These are things you need to take into account. If you're doing team versus team, you want to create a certain level of symmetry and with that level of symmetry you want to have you know if it's team versus team you want them to each have an equal portion of the map to work with or an equal size for your base you don't want to give one team an advantage over the other and you have to take that into consideration if it's player versus environment yeah you could just put whatever you can throw some trees out there some foliage and you can build a city or whatever your your environment's going to be and go from there. So let your game mode go into consideration. And since we're not doing any combat on this particular level, I think that if this is a single player game starting off with level one, you should kind of get the character or the player broken into the gameplay. So you want to start them off really, really easy and get them using their controls so they get comfortable with using those controls. So to start off with level one, we want to make almost like a maze type system and if you were to go into your starter content now I have rearranged everything in this project so you don't just see the uh, the starter content what I've done is I've incorporated everything into normal looking places like your materials and your meshes and your textures and your particles they're all inside here but what you don't see is you've got these geometries that are for the the base stuff here but what you don't have is the extra geometries that came with this which were the wall sections with the doors and the windows and that kind of stuff you can use those if you want to but 
um, try to get in the habit of making your own stuff. So what we want to do is we want to create sort of a maze effect to get us from, well, here to here. We don't want to go in just a straight line because that would be boring. But the first thing we need to make sure that can happen is we either need to build a wall around everything so that we keep our player in, or we need to go ahead and put in a system of uh, blocking volumes to prevent them from falling out. In this case, I'm actually going to use a wall. And it's just going to work for our situation a little bit nicer. And I'm going to go ahead first off and grab our level teleport and move it out a little bit. And I'm going to make the wall 100 wide, but it's going to go the full width of the entire map. We don't want to just build a, a cube and then, you know, make it to where it's hollow and we play on the inside. We're just going to put some walls so we can look up and see the sky. Again, keep it simple, stupid. Let's go to our materials. And I'm going to select the brick, clay, new. And I'm going to go to my geometries tab and throw a box geometry out. And you guys probably have seen me do this a thousand times, messing with BSP geometries. But... It's important to remember that if you're going to make this box go from one side of the map to the other, that's pretty big, and you don't want to use the select and scale objects. That Just don't do it. Forget that that even exists for BSP geometries, and use the brush settings. So what I want to do is I can look. I've got X, Y, and Z right here to show me what's what. So Y is going in this direction. So the Y, let's make it 100. So there we've made it 100 wide and it didn't screw up our material. So now I can grab it and drag it over here to the edge. Now we need to figure out how wide it's going to be. Well, to start off with, let's go ahead and zero it out so that when we do make it wide enough, it'll fit in between because we're working from the center of this. Let's go with our X value and try, and I know this is going to be too small, but 2000. So we can actually double that. Let's go with even more. Let's try five. Th not 500, dum-dum. 5,000 is still a little bit too small. Let's actually take it up to 7,000. Too much. So we're going to back it down to 6,500. And it's overlapping a little bit, but that's okay. Doesn't make sense that it would be, but okay, whatever. We're at our zero. So we can actually try 6,400 and even try one more time at 6,200. If you actually think about it, and you have to, like, you know, think and stuff, if you have it zeroed out, it fits perfectly on this wall but it doesn't fit perfectly on this wall. We're off by 100. So if we do 6,300, actually let's put it at 6,250. Split the difference. We're hanging over the edge here, but we need more on this side. And if we line it up on this side, yeah, let's go ahead and go with 63. and try to zero it out one more time. We're hanging over the edge, but we're not on this side. So let's drag it over to match that line. And we're going to look here. We're hanging over just a hair. So we know that we're going to be playing with a margin of 50 here. Again, trial by error. Now the next one we're going to do is our Z height. I'm actually going to make the Z height 800. And then I can go ahead and split the difference here and make this to 400. And there, we have our, our wall. We can actually go ahead and control C and control V. Not really. Um, we've already covered doing the, um, the, the health and thirst, or thirst and hunger pickups. Make sure they work. I'm just putting in a border on the, the, uh, the map itself. So we know 6300 is our number here. So we're going to go ahead, instead of making a copy and rotating, we could do that. But I'm not going to. Let's go ahead and just 
we know that we're at 6300 on our y we're at 100 by 6300 by 800 we can do 400 here and let's go ahead and zero it out this way we know that it's not going to matter all that much that we're overlapping just a touch but we can set that at 50 there is another way to, to avoid that just resize your, your ground so we're just doing a physical border like I said the other way we could have done it was just leave it open but it kind of looks tacky um, and we're gonna have to copy these over to our other maps as well there might be a little bit of, tr of a trick we can do for that so we're not trying to recreate this every single solitary time so box brush two through five and if you were to think about it there is actually a way to right click and you can move to but you can also um, set it up to auto I'll have to look into another way of doing it that way but for now we're just going to focus on this map so let's actually take a look at it and there's our beautiful wall keeps us trapped inside the level so our player can't just walk through and fall off the edge and we don't have to worry about putting in the um, the blocking volume we have a way of keeping them in here so think about flow design and you want to challenge your player but not by much on level one like I said you wanted to get your player involved in it so they kinda get an idea of what's going on I'm not gonna texture the ground texture just yet but I'm gonna go ahead and texture this level one block so we know what it is first off let's give it a name um, we'll just call it level block and I want to go ahead and select all adjacent surfaces and I am just gonna throw that wood texture on there just so we have something different to look at and the reason why I'm not gonna do anything with the ground texture right now is because I want that grid I want to be able to see it and help me to kind of position things so with our map flow you want to have the player kind of do a little bit of everything that you're going to do during the regular gameplay but you want to not make it too challenging if you want them to we, we, we don't have any advanced animations yet we don't have any shooting we don't have any of the other stuff going on so right now our character just has the ability to walk and jump we don't have crouch set up yet we don't have uh, shooting so it's just a walk around and check out the map kind of situation we have um, so let's actually make it to where the player has to actually do something to make it difficult but not impossible to make it to the end to our teleporter to get out of this map so what do we have to work with well we can sit there and do a BSP geometry thing and continuously add those in um, and if you guys would rather see instead of um, creating the map itself um, because I've already done quite a bit uh, well, you know, well we'll get to the shooting stuff later like I said um, it's all a matter of getting the flow we haven't really set you know everybody wants this game to be what they want it to be about um, it could be a shooter it could be a, an oversized pool table it could be a um, whatever we don't have a specific game mode just yet um, and yes my, my pool table is actually kind of fun I might actually release that project sometime and um, just as a playable just to see if other people li like the idea of a you know I'm not gonna talk about it because you know I'm actually working on a side game for that but anyway the um, the map we can sit here and look at it or we can actually design a flow system around it 
and you can use the PSP geometries or short term you can use basics take a look at them you can drag something in here scale it move it manipulate it I wouldn't use these like the example of this cube right here you can move it around and place it in different places but when you try applying textures to it and let's use one that I know as a good work with the concrete tiles I apply that to it if you look at how the materials laid out on here if I put this here this is a one by one cube so it's going to be 100 units by 100 units and if you look at it the division of the the tiles is exactly 50 by 50 tiles right so if we take this same cube and put another version of it in here and let's line it up and let's go ahead and scale it two by two by two and then take a look at it look what we've done to the, the textures we've now made the textures one by one by one well it's now where this was 50 from here to here this is now 100 from here to here and um, yeah really gonna have to pre-plan how you want that to look now the, the hover bike yeah that thing is pretty sexy man so rescaling the cube if this is all I was gonna do to it that doesn't look horrible but if I was gonna do the same thing and make this cube that size I'd want my textures to be the same size as that so what you're actually placing them in here I would actually go with a BSP geometry it's already set up as a 200 by 200 now you compare the two just want to drop it here in a side-by-side -side comparison if you look at this is a one by one this is a two by two this is a two by two but you look at the materials on the one on on this side versus the ones on this side and what you end up with is a stretched material so the cube is good for short term because you can sit there and stretch it and use that transform but look what it does to the material so you're not going to want to use it long term so it's just it takes a few more moments to actually create what you're trying to do out of a BSP geometry um, I need to refine my techniques a little bit on the way I'm, I've been doing it because I've been taking this and let's say if I wanted to make it larger um, grab it here we'll make it 400 by 100 by uh, 400 and we'll set the Z location to 200 which is always the Z here your Z location for your your transform needs to be half of what your brush Z is and that'll get it sitting directly on your floor if your floor is at the zero height exactly now like what he was mentioning right there now that I've created this what if I want this side to actually be uh, wood and this side to be wood well I would not be able to do that with uh, the, the regular cube and you can grab that texture and rotate it 90 degrees so if you're trying to apply wallpaper you want your wall to look like this on this side but you're in a different room over here and you want this to actually look like oh I don't know um, the the same brick tile so now you can have multiple textures on the same block to do all kind of cool stuff with it and then you can actually drag in another one now here's the trick I'm going to make this texture the same as what it what it is on on this side so it kind of matches up here now I want to put a hole between these two walls so that I can actually make a door frame out of this particular BSP so what I'm gonna do is quit zigzagging back and forth and making everybody crazy here I'm gonna go ahead and select the, the the material that is currently on the face of both sides of that I'm then gonna go ahead and grab my my box brush 
and I'm going to place it in the map. And yes, it's still solid cube. That's not a problem. We're going to fix that. We're going to go ahead and center that up. Let's go ahead and center this in the map. Let's actually put our coordinates to 0, 0, 0. Actually, we wanted it at 200 on the Z. So now when we come in here with our new block, we can go ahead and do the same thing. Do 0, 0, 100 is fine. And we want to go ahead and make this a hole in the wall. So we know the width of it is 100, so I want to make our Y to 102. We can do that because we're set on the zero axis. We know our location. And we would end up having to bump it back in the Y by 1, or actually negative 1, so that it sticks out just a little bit and it's proud on both sides. And then we're going to turn it from additive to subtractive. And now, not only have we created the hole in the wall, but the inside of it is now going to be the texture of the wall around it. So, if you did not do that, and if you want to change it as well, you can actually come in here and now you've got um, the ability to change that texture. But I like to make it match the walls so that it looks right. So now when we come in here to play, we actually have a wall that we can set up with a hole in it. Once you get the hang of doing BSP geometries, it's, it opens up your map making considerable amount because you can sit there and create your own custom walls and throw some materials on them. And I don't want to turn this into another BSP um, video, but what if you just want this to be some kind of cool monument? Uh, I mean, hell, you could sit here and take it and make it into the letter H and just copy this and paste another copy of it and do that with it. So now you made the letter H. I mean, whatever. I mean, using the, uh, the additives and subtractives, you can do all kind of stuff with it. Um, you can see, nice and clean. Um, but if you wanted to, you can go ahead and take that back out. What if you want to give this a different shape? You can go into your geometry editing, um, select your BSP, and grab this edge and this edge, and I can go ahead and change it. Lovely. What if I wanted to make it a little bit longer? I can click on this face, and I can click on extrude and I can bring it out a little bit so now I can then come over here and click on this and this and I can go ahead and do that so if you're building a house then this will be one way you could do it um, and then you can go ahead and go back to your regular and apply your materials. Nice and easy. So it works. I said I don't want to make this into a BSP geometry um, video because I've already got several videos on doing those, and I'm still kind of an amateur at it myself. But but if you just take that in consideration and. Um, Now the links aren't allowed inside here, um, but if you want to donate it to the project, I can actually add it into the base project that I have uploaded, and I can just re-upload a new version of the base of it, and then we can develop off of off of it. So. I'm not actually going to do much in creating the actual map. I want you guys to kind of create your own map, set up your own flow. This is just to show you that go ahead and use your BSP geometries, set it up, um, create the flow. Yeah, um, you can actually link it into um, uh, Discord message and then I'll. Uh, 
I'll go ahead and I will repack the um, the the sample package where I've got everything already neat and organized and set up for this. So for people who are already doing this, they can do that, or um, we can figure it out from there. And then on next Tuesday's episode, I'll I'll start working with it. Not Yeah, but you see how my my file structure is on this. It's a little different than because like the starter content, which you, yours doesn't have any any um, materials to it at all. So, yeah, um, and that's cool. But currently, right now, we're not, we're still in single player mode, so we haven't started doing any kind of replication or anything like that yet. Replication is the bane of my existence. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, you know, 14 megs is a small download. So that, that's something that I can pop into the um, this example. Because you see how I've redone the um, the starter content. Oh, yeah, I know it'll work in single player. But I got the materials inside of my assets folder for the starter content instead of being where it was. And, in fact, um, yeah, all of the props, instead of being in a props folder... There in this folder right here. I just thought it looked a little bit nicer than having it the way it comes when you add starter content to your project. Um, you know, adding stuff in, you know, I wanted to keep everybody focused on the basics of flow design for the first few episodes before getting really heavy into, you know, the the maps. Get your, your flow set up. Get your your concepts down pat of what you're trying to do and then work from there you know trying to make a map pretty will take you forever you'll spend more time making a map pretty than just about anything else um, so work on the actual the core elements of your game get your core right get it smooth get it to where the game functions in a good basic way at first and then from there you can go ahead and start adding in your your pretty stuff it's like right now i could spend two whole days decorating this entire map to make it look really really awesome but it's not going to convey well on watching a video because it's like, oh, well, he's just doing this and this and this. So let's actually... I'm just going to show as the example just as one little section here. Um, cause if I get really froggy, I might even throw in some door functionality and stuff like that too. And we want to make you negative 90. So. Yeah, that'll be a good experiment to work with for um, the, the Polygon stuff. There was a new app, um, update on the Polygon City. Oh, I love it when there's no, no collisions. Hey. Um, yeah, apparently the Polygon City, one of my biggest complaints was the... Uh, the fact that the streets had no collision so they fixed that and they fixed a few things with the cars as well and I hope they didn't screw it up like they did the um, the polygon heist cars or the helicopter from that um, door collision there we'll give it some collision that's good enough Yeah, what I can do is, um, and I actually ran out and got pizza and had some delays and I got home five minutes before I started the stream. I had time to choke down one slice of pizza before uh, kicking into the stream. And yeah, I'd like to actually eat some of my pizza because it's now getting really, really cold. But I like to try to stay on a schedule of streaming at specific times. So people aren't wondering, well, why the hell hasn't he started his stream yet? It's 9 o'clock or, or whatever. So, 
what I'll do is I'll go ahead and grab that from you, and I will eat a little bit. Yeah, there's... Oh, hey, I'm a fat kid, man. Uh, fat kids gotta eat, you know? I have to buy cheap food, because, you know, go to Little Caesars, get me a, a, a pizza from them. Get your damn pizza for six bucks. And that's a, a good one. I need to get um, a food sponsor. I'm actually working on a um, one particular sponsor that's actually a coffee sponsor for as much coffee as I go through. All right, well, what I'll do is um, we're right at the one hour mark on this video. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and we'll, we'll end this one. But I just want you guys to see that um, there's enough stuff in here to you get started with for creating the, the first map. But with what he's submitting to me to, to add into this, um, it's actually a vehicle. So we can then start um, playing around with some vehicle stuff. So yeah, well, um, what I'll do is a different... Yep. Yeah, I, I'm actually going to be streaming again here in a little bit. We're going to do a different type of stream. What I'll do is, um, what we're talking about with this other one is we're going to take... Um, um, his scripting for the, the vehicle code and apply it to the, the vehicles from the Polygon Heist Pack or the, the Polygon uh, City Pack since there's a series of cars inside there and see what we can do with that for replication because his vehicle that he's submitting to me is also multiplayer and has the ability to have a passenger right along that the passenger can actually shoot so we're going to try that we're going to play around with it a little bit and see what we can come up with, and we'll do it on the live stream. And what I can do is I'll set up, after I finish eating really quickly, a multiplayer project. So what I actually create in the stream will actually be multiplayer. Yeah, just the vehicle part. Yeah, I, I got it. No, no shooting part, but I'm just saying that um, it has the ability for the passenger to be able to shoot from. But for now, what we're going to do is... Um, take a quick break. I'll make this uh, next stream start maybe 30 minutes or so. Give me enough time to eat. I will do it based off of one of my multiplayer templates that I sell to try to make a few bucks um, so that we can actually play it in multiplayer once the stream's over with. Um, for members of my Discord, I will post the link to the end result in Discord and we could actually play it in multiplayer and, and run around together with it. Um, keep in mind, my template for Steam, it, it, well, it is a Steam template, so, well, it'll, you'll have to be on the same, if you want to join my server that I'm going to host, then you'll have to be on the east coast of the U.S. So, it is Steam region based. So, alright, well, we're going to finish up this one right now, and... And so this is our, our, our end point for this particular video. Next Tuesday we'll pick up on this and we will actually do a, a bit more than just decorate the map. What I can do throughout the weekend is I'll play with this map a little bit. I'll actually put some content in here so that uh, you guys don't have to watch me create BSB geometries and that kind of stuff. I just want to discuss the fact that um, think ahead, plan the flow of your map and have the your first map that a player goes to something that's a little bit easier on them so they kind of get into the feel of the game so that they can actually start um, learning the controls and so forth so guys thanks for watching and so we're going to take a quick 30 minute break and then I will start up a new stream and we're going to work on a project together and the end result if it works then we'll actually I'll put a download link to it and we can drive it and play with it and Go multiplayer. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.